Yes. <laughs> I am Anton, as you can see, I'm from Estonia. Anybody else here from the Baltic States? I'm not really, I'm totally from Swinton, it's a sort of like Somalia. We've had Western Virginia, we've had Chester. I just wanted to sound a little bit more exotic as well. <laughs> so, so it looks like I've made a bit of an effort. Let's carry on with the music. Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about the science book. In fact, this CV still needs a bit of work, really, doesn't it? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I genuinely don't know much about history. I don't know what I'm doing here tonight. My lack of knowledge about ancient Greek mythology is very much by Apollo's hill. <laughs> Well, I am quite interested in ancient Greek mathematics. I'm just reading a book about it at the moment called Here's Looking at Euclid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's 11 types of people in this world. Those who understand Roman numerals and those who don't. <laughs> that was very quick, Manchester. It took them three weeks to get that in the beginning. <laughs> but I think the reason I have been invited to that, I have something of a historical art artifact in my own right, something of a relic. You're looking at somebody, ladies and gentlemen, who's been a teacher for the past 25 years. I'm not looking for applause and approval, I'm looking for a fucking escape plan. Are there any teachers in the audience? Bit of happy new academies. But um, we've got some first time comedians on tonight, and there is a bit of an issue about the relationship between the performer and the audience. You don't know whether I'm telling you the truth or not, just because I've got a microphone in my hand. So just to get your confidence, I'm going to prove to you that I've been teaching for 25 years. I brought some evidence along with me. Some of that evidence is on my face. <laughs> the rampant wrinkles and the rapidly receding grey hair. But I've also brought this along and um, you're going to have to forgive me Salford for a bit of a poignant and sentimental moment. It's just that after 25 years of hard graft of teaching, my employer Salford City College very honourably and very graciously and very kindly bestowed upon me a homemade certificate in a cheap wooden frame. <laughs> if I do 50 years, I get a fucking book token. <laughs> it's not even a good certificate, that, is it? <laughs> I got a better certificate than that when I was 12 years old. For lifting a great big heavy brick out of two metres of water where I got in my pyjamas. <laughs> Does anybody else have chronic diarrhoea? <laughs> but 25 years, ladies and gentlemen, let me just put that into context for you. That's one year less than Nelson Mandela got <laughs> for racially motivated acts of terrorism on behalf of the ANC. Where's my Wembley concert with the Tracy Chapman moment? Where's my number one single? 25 years in captivity, trying to drag kids through the GCSE. Won't someone please come and rescue me? I said, free Tony Kinsella. It's not happening, is it? 25 years of teaching. I'm not new to this, I've done this shit for a few years, but I decided to do my first ever one-man comedy show about my 25 years in teaching, but when you do a full-length show you need some kind of metaphor, some kind of motif to tie it onto, so uh, I decided to go with this. Some of you may be familiar with it. It's Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. If anybody doesn't know what this is all about, this psychologist wrote it, it's all about the journey through life and the different aspirations and how you need to start off with your physiological needs and then you work your way up to the hierarchy until you get to the top and that's all about self-esteem and self-realisation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my one-man show was this rock and roll! <laughs> but, um, what Bright Club is all about is people who are doing research and turning it into comedy and uh, when I decided I was going to do this one-man show about my 25 years, I knew all about the hierarchy I first came across it when I became a teacher, and it's actually part of the teacher trade it. Never found any purpose for it in the quarter of a century since I read it, until it became the backbone of the comedy set 25 years later. But I knew a little bit about the hierarchy, but I knew absolutely nothing about the guy who devised it, a psychologist called Abraham Maslow. So I did what everybody did tonight, I started conducting some research, lots of websites, lots of encyclopedias, microfiche. I looked at Almanac, took out, took clean, I went to page one of Wikipedia. <laughs> Room full of intellectuals like yourself, I'm sure you've all done it. But I just want to share with you the first three things I found out about Abraham Maslow, who's the man behind the hierarchy. First thing is that his parents were Jewish immigrants who went to America. And the reason they left is because the Russian government at the time were persecuting Jewish people. And let's just take a moment to reflect on that, ladies and gentlemen. A Russian government persecuting a minority group. What enlightened times we now live in. 
Anybody who's new to comedy, that's called irony. <laughs> and the second thing I discovered about Abraham Maslow is his date of birth. And um, he was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1908 on April the 1st. <laughs> April Fool's Day. Suddenly this shit starts to make a little bit more sense, doesn't it? But um, this is the way the mind of the comedian and the researcher meets in a kind of Venn diagram. Alex was talking about Venn diagrams before and I recently went out with a maths teacher who specialised in Venn diagrams. Profit offering, something we just have nothing in common. But, uh, <laughs> but did find out that uh, I started to get interested then about whether other, any other people, historically or contemporary, were born on April Fool's Day. Um, I did a bit more extensive research, page two of Wikipedia. Um, all these hundreds of names came up, most of whom had never heard of, but there was two that really jumped out at me who were born on April Fool's Day. One was the former Iron Chancellor of Prussia, Otto von Bismarck, and the other one was the radio and TV presenter and the new top gear host, Mr. Chris Evans. One crazy, obsessive megalomaniac intent on world domination. And not on Bob Bismarck, because that's how jokes work. That is how jokes work. <laughs> Any first time comedians, you're very welcome. <laughs> and the third thing I found out about um, Abraham Maslow was uh, when he started to excel academically. He left his parents behind and drove a bit of a gulf between them because they never had a proper chance of an education, so. I came across this thing that he once wrote to his mother, this is absolutely genuine. He left it on her bedside table when he was about 12 years old. And it says, Mother, I despise your physical appearance and have nothing but contempt for your selfishness, your stinginess, your narcissism, your intolerance of the Negro race, your shameful exploitation of others, and your sheer dirtiness. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, love, baby, kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> I'll be honest, I made up that last bit, but the rest of that's absolutely genuine. And I can't see you particularly, but just by a show of hands, have we got any parents in the audience? <laughs> if you're a parent, you'll be absolutely traumatised if your kids came out with that sort of abuse about you. But it kept me thinking, as parents, what do we want most for our kids? We want them to do better than us, academically, professionally, emotionally, financially. So on that basis, it sounds like Mrs. Baslow is probably a pretty brilliant mother, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, this is one of the great things about being a teacher for the past 25 years. No matter how your own kids turn out, you do come across other people's kids <laughs> on pretty much a daily basis. It made me happy that yours made it to that end of the food chain, let's just break my mind. I'm not going to start dissing the lovely kids of Salford, most of them are absolutely brilliant, but I was walking down the corridor of Pendleton campus where I worked last week, and there was two teenage boys that I overheard having a conversation. And I'm not kidding you, it was effing this, effing that. They weren't swearing, they were just comparing the GCSE results. <laughs> but, when I was writing this show about Maslow in 25 years, I thought I've been incredibly cynical about teaching tonight, and I have given nearly half of my life to the profession, so I want to be a bit more positive towards the end of the show and think about what I've really got out of teaching, what's the really brilliant things about being a teacher. So, um, I decided to make this list, nobody was going anywhere later, were you? And it's a list of the things that are absolutely brilliant about teaching by Tony Kinsella. Number one, we get really good holidays. <laughs> Took me a week and a half to write that. Luckily I was on holiday at the time, so it was fine. <laughs> You've been absolutely brilliant, ladies and gentlemen. I'd just like to say, keep supporting Bright Club, it's a brilliant concept. In these days of education cuts and enforced academies and student tuition fees, Keep on fighting for the education system that the taxpayers, our children, and our children's children deserve. Support the junior doctors, support the NHS, vote for Jeremy Corbyn, vote against the European exit, but most of all, fuck David Attenborough, vote him at Boatface every time. <laughs>